I would like to give an introduction to the open source large language models, just a brief overview and some hands-on testing. First of all, why we need open source large language models? Okay, so basically, as we know, you know, the, we have many hyperscalers, you know, proprietary large language models, such like uh, Azure OpenAI or OpenAI standalone GPT series. 1 to 4 and also the Google Lambda models and so on. So they are great, they are still needing the competition in the area of generative AI. But however, they are not free. They actually the running cost will increase as your traffic load is increasing. So moreover, so like the majority of the enterprise company executives side trust related concerns such like the air ethics, privacy and security, air safety and reliability, air explainability, and also the accuracy of the air generated content as major obstacles and the impediment for enterprise adoption of the general AI technologies. As some like a proper like alternative and answer to such kind of concerns, the open source large language models come into the horizon for us to assess. So such like the Huggling Face have a very nice open source, you know, the series of large language models, also the GPT-4 all, the large language models, fast chat, you know, the uh, family of the large language models, open source and so on. So they are totally free and uh, always suitable for the personal use hobbies and the research purpose. And also many of them also allowed, you know, the, for the commercial use case. So you can just uh, download, deploy and run all these open source large models locally on your personal laptop, free of any debt privacy, security, GDPR concerns. That is brilliant. First of all, we need to be clear. There's two general types of the large language models. One for the purpose of embedding, the other for the purpose of completion. So first of all, the embedding large language models, the input into the model is text and output is just like embedding vector. So the embedding vector is an efficient mathematical representation of the, the human you know, the written text that encodes the semantic, you know, information and meaning ready for the machine learning model to learn. So that is very important. So there's many, many use cases. So embedding actually the, can support the many downstream natural language processing tasks, such like uh, text classification, class, clustering, such like the detect some like patterns among large amount of the text via the clustering. Also, Google using text embedding to power its search engine. And also you can do the text similarity analysis for the information retrieval or the knowledge search, where you need a larger model to answer a question with the domain specific knowledge. For this purpose, you can follow the three steps. The first step, you're using an embedding model to vectorize your documents to create a knowledge database. Then in the second step, at the inference time, um, you can do the semantic search in the database to find the top n most similar records to the new user query, which is also converted into the embedding vector. Finally, in the third step, you can add the, the top n most similar record as additional context info to augment and enrich your user query. Such, cause, such things we call the prop engineering or metaprop to actually to better out the larger learning model, the generation of the output response. For the completion larger learning models, it's a straightforward. It's text to text generation. The input text, output also text. So basically you're just using the larger learning model out of box to generate the output text condition by the input prop. So here is some like the illustrative 
you know, the demonstration of the concept of the text embedding. As you can see, the when two embedding vectors have the similar semantic meaning, they are also very close to each other in the embedding space. And you can apply the any mathematical uh, operations such as like a minus, uh, add, you know, the to actually, to actually to get some like interesting results. Okay. There is some, you know, the uh, list of the top open source embedding larger language models, such like the E5 series, the instructor series, GT, GTE series, and also the other, you know, open source, you know, the models for the text embedding generation. So there is so-called the massive text embedding and benchmark, MTEB leaderboard. Let's take a look. So this board have the many, you know, uh, many validation testing datasets and supporting them up to more than 100, you know, languages. So you can see on the top of the uh, leaderboard, the top three is the GTE, E5, Large V2, and the Instructor XL, okay? So the GTE is just like the recently added to the leaderboard. So it's, um, it's actually uh, uh, stand for the uh, general text embedding model. So it's trained by the Anibaba Demo Academy and mainly based on the BERT framework and currently offers three different size models, including large, base, and small. Okay, so it also can, you know, apply to various, you know, the text embedding tasks, such like information retrieval, semantics, you know, the similarity, uh, search, text re-ranking, and so on. Okay. So for the uh, E5 and the instructor, um, embedding models, I got some hands-on notebook, okay? So, for example, for the instructor Excel, um, it's actually the instruction fine-tuned text embedding model that can generate embeddings tailored to any task, text classification, retrieval, clustering, evaluation, so on, and apply to any domain, finance, science, and so on, but simply provide the task instruction without any fine tuning, you can just use it out of box. So it, this model is very easy to use with the Huckling face, you know, customized sentence transform library. So it's just one single line of code to install it. And then you can just like do uh, run it. So here, you know, also some like the, you know, the uh, Reddit uh, thread, some people ask is the open AI's, you know, the proprietary text embedding Adam 002 is the best embedding model. Obviously, according to this like-for-like uh, -like comparison, it is not. So in the leaderboard, it is only ranked the, the tenth position, whereas instructor XL model is ranked the like the fourth position, and the also we get some even better models. Okay, so but let's actually have some like the you know the uh, uh, exercise using this uh, instruct Excel embedding model. So first of all, you just loading this model into the Python notebook, and then you give some instructions and it generates the embeddings very nicely, okay? So you, this is some like the certain format for you to uh, using this uh, instruct Excel model. So if we want to calculate embedding vector for specific text, you can follow the unified template to write the instructions. So such like represent the domain, the text type for the task objective. So the domain is optional. It, spies, it specifies the, the specific domain of the text in interest, such like the flying, science, finance, medicines, technologies, uh, militaries, and so on. The, text type is, is actually the mandatory is required. It specifies the encoding unit, such like the, the title, sentence, paragraph, document, and so on, right? And also the task objective is optional. It specifies the objective of the embedding, such like information retrieval, text classification, and so on, okay? 
Let's give it a try. First of all, calculate the sentence similarities, right? We get like the several sentences, and then we can just very easily to calculate the sentence embedding and then get the uh, you know cosine similarity. Okay. So you can see this is a you can calculate the similarities between the different sentences by you know the uh checking the embedding vector similarity. Okay. So also you can using the uh, uh, embedding for information retrieval. So here we got some like user query, such like where is the food stored in a yam plant? Okay, then we got like the a corpus that contains you know the four different documents. So you can see by using the text embedding, you can vectorize the query text and also the all the documents in the corpus, and then you actually calculate their similarity and then you can get the top one the most similar document for this uh, query so you see the last document with the document index uh, three is actually the uh, most similar one okay this is very nice also i can simplify my uh the format so as like the only the uh, uh text type here is required right text type is only read text type is required other is just optional so we can just like say re represent the question represent the document okay so that's it so that is you get this the same result as well okay also you can using the text embedding for the clustering so basically you're just using the scaling cluster you know the the packages you can nicely calculate the, the uh, text or the any document or sentence you know the similarity and the clustering for example here uh, we get like the two clusters and four documents in one cluster and one document in a second cluster okay okay very quick testing is very nice so we, as we can see the open source alternative to the uh, open air proprietary you know the embedding models such like the instruct excel have similar or even better performance and uh, the only concern is like interference latency which is a bit longer and uh, so in this case it probably could still any like the non-time critical in the applications so that is the, my initial uh, observation okay let's also take a look at the another even better you know the uh, the second you know the the top two okay the in the second place in the need board the e5 large v2 text embedding model okay so it actually the this neural network you know the have 24 you know the hidden layers and the embedding size is 1024 okay so it is the top three in the uh this kind of the you know the need board for the text embedding tasks so um its use usage is also very straightforward. So you just like to define all these kind of utility functions and the using the PyTorch, and then something to to be uh, pay a bit attention is here. So actually, there's two steps in detail to actually to generate some text embedding. In the first step, you need to actually to using the tokenizer to actually to tokenize any unstructured text into the tokens and token ids okay and then in the second step you actually uh, convert the tokens ids into the embedding vector so that is actually the how the happens behind the scene for two steps okay so that is uh, also applied to any embedding uh, large learning models so now we're using the e5 large v2 model and we can calculate the embeddings for any text okay and then you can you know calculate the sentence text similarity scores you know for this thing you can this is the similarity scores between the four uh, sentence samples you know above also we can do the information retrieval so i define the utility functions to cal to get the embeddings then this is the query this is the corpus contains like the multiple uh, sample documents again you know when you run it you know the it will generate embeddings and give you like the top three you know, most similar documents to this query okay 
and in the descending order how the similarities go. Okay. Also another option, second option, you know, the for calculating the text similarity for the information retrieval is here. So basically it's just like different Python code to actually for the same purpose. Okay. Nicely, also we get the top three, the most similar documents in the descending order of the relevance. Okay. Okay, as you say, the open source alternative such like E E5, large language models, actually have even better performance than the, you know, the other, you know, the zero two, you know, the proprietary open AI models. And uh, for our initial experiment with the E5 large language models, its latency looks like the reasonable and uh, actually it's quite quick to run. Uh, it's a bit quicker than the instruct model, okay? Right, let's go back to our slice deck, okay? After the embeddings, let's also introduce, take a look at the bit like the what's the open source, you know, the options for the completion uh, models. So this is a list of the top, you know, the open source completion library models, such like the Vakunia series, the FastChat T5 series, the GPT-4 all family, like the snoozy, groozy, you know, the breezy and so on, right? And also we have the other options, many other options, such like the MPT series, Alpaca, Open Assistant, and many more. Let's take a bit look at the leaderboard for the larger language model comparison, including both proprietary and open source larger models. Okay. Uh, it is here, you can see. For this larger model comparison leaderboard, they are using the like the three benchmarks the chatbot arena, MT bench, and also MMLU. Actually, it contains a lot of the tasks and the validation uh, data set for some like objective, like for like comparison. So according to this, you know, the leaderboard, as we can see, GPT-4 is still the top one, the most advanced and the most accurate, the larger models for generation. But other open source uh, models is actually catching up. Okay, for example, you know the the first in open source model is the Vakunia models. Okay, the Vakunia models families like thirty three billions, thirteen billions, seven billions. You know they actually on the top ten of the leaderboard. This is very impressive, and uh, um, Vakunia is actually the some like a chat assistant trained by fine tuning the uh, Lama, you know, the user shared con con conversations collected from the shared GPT. So where the Lama is actually the uh, connection of the foundation language models ranging from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters. So, so in this paper, they actually they train their models on the trainings of tokens and show that it's possible to train in state art models using the public available data set, okay, exclusively. This is where the Lama, you know, the foundation model coming from. Okay, so then based on that, they actually building the such kind of Vicuna, you know, the open source like models, which choose the quite a state art in the open source community. Okay. So it is auto regressive large model based on the transformer architecture. And it's not for the commercial use case, it's just for the research and the personal you know, use, okay, at the moment. Based on that, also we can see like the uh, other uh, uh, open source large memory models for completing so like MPT, okay. So MPT is actually the chatbot like model for the dialogue generation. It was built by the fine-tuning the MT 30 billion parameters on the shared GPT Vacunia, Camel, GPT Teacher, and so on. So it has also the non-commercial license, and its model was trained by the Mossack machine learning and company and follow the modified decode-only transformer architecture. Okay. Let's go back to our leadboard, and also on the leadboard we can see the other interesting the open source like models such like the GPT for all 30 billion snoozy model which we already mentioned in the previous video session. Also we can see the 
um, alpaca. So this is also interesting. So alpaca is actually was created by the Stanford University. So it is uh, you know, 7 billion, you know, the large online models fine-tuned from the llama. Again, 7 billion model on the 52,000 instruction following demonstrations. So on their evaluations, um, some uh, the alpaca behaves you know the similarly to the open AIs, you know, text are finished 003 model while being surprisingly small and easily cheap to reproduce. So this is actually the some people even deployed on the smartphones, it can run it, even on the you know handset. So that is also brilliant. So the only concern is actually it's only also for the research purpose, personal use purpose, it cannot be used for the commercial you know purpose. At the moment, okay. So yeah, so this is um, also like the open assistant, uh, uh, larger models and many other models. Open assistant is actually the, the fourth iteration English, so called the SFT, the supervised fine tuning model of the open assistant project. It's based on the past year twelve billion that was fine tuning on the human demonstration of the assistant conversation collected through this. Uh, uh, link so the human feedback, you know the reinforced learning method. Okay, so that is also another nice you know options for open source. Okay, you can see there's many many open source models, and um, some is suitable for the commercial use case, some is not suitable, and uh, the first you know the on the list is this kind of the uh, RWQV model followed by the open assist model and also the fast chat T5 model, okay? For the fast chat T5 models, we can have some like high sound test, uh, okay? Let's go to the our notebook, okay? So here, actually, the, you can use in the hackling phase, you know, the uh, op open source larger models and very nicely, you just need to download and run it, you know, in your local machine with the LangChain framework. So basically, first of all, you need to actually to install the dependencies such like the LangChain, the Hackling Face Hub, and also Transformers packages. Then you can download any Hackling Face open source luxury models to your local machine. Okay, here you need to get some like the Hackling Face API key, just up, just like uh, register and up, get your free, uh, you know, the API key tokens um, on their website. Then you can just like to download any models. Here I just downloaded the fast chat T5 model. And here you can also like the to replace this line of code to download any other models, such like the download like Vakunia, you know, the models as well. Okay. So this is actually the you know the very flexible. So you just like download the models, then you can run in the open source like the models locally. So for this purpose, you need the land chain to have to put everything together, props, larger models. So here we already have our you know the fast chat T5 model downloaded. Then I specify my uh large learning models placeholder for land chip. So here this is my hugging face pipeline from the model ID. This is my T5 fast chat T5 model. This is the task. I want the text to text generations for the completion purpose. Okay. Then this is some like the neural network uh, temp the hyperparameters the temperatures, like max length of the tokens in the generations. So yeah, you can just fine tuning if you want, or you can just keep it as default. So basically zero value for temperature means, you know, the, um, that's model to generate some like honest, like the choose, choose for output. So this is the prop template, okay? So you are friendly chatbot assistant, then you actually supposed to answer this, uh, any user's questions. This is question, placeholder, this is answer. So then this is our propped, you know, template. Then you put everything together in the land chain, okay? The propped and the larger line models placeholder. That's it, okay. Then you can run it. So this is unit functions, ask any questions. Then this is another unit functions to actually calculate the, the latency for the inference. So here I run in the program. So ask a question, tell me about the uh, Apache Kafka in a few sentences. Then in about like the 38 seconds, the, my local deployed in the open source, you know, the fast chat T5 model, give me the answers. It's quite a 
good, very concise and uh, spot on. So yeah, so this is the initial testing on the uh, open source larger models. Again, here you can replace the faster T5 with any other open source models you are interested in using this, such kind of hackling fast open source framework. Okay, so in summary, the open source larger models, as we see, you know, are getting better and better and closing up the gap between the open source and the top the proprietary models such as like GPT-4. Also, uh, the latency wise, the inference latency is still a bit high running locally in my consumer, you know, the laptop is a totally reasonable, understandable. And uh, it can be possibly mitigated by using some more powerful, you know, the machines such like a GPU server and the hardware acceleration later on, okay. So hopefully you actually learn something. So don't forget to subscribe this channel to keep updated on the latest AI machine learning trends and also generative AI large learning models trends. Download a copy of the slide deck and also the hands-on notebook. Also access to the many more free learning resources about the data science here. Thank you all and uh, uh, talking to you next time.